General, I wonder if you can tell me sort of what does the U.S. military effort in the Philippines in terms of providing relief look like on the ground for you now? What is it really involving? How broad is it? Briefly, if you had to give me a sort of a, a nutshell, uh, in a nutshell, describe it to me. How would you say it? What would you say it looks like right now? It, it's a huge international effort. There's there are uh, international partners from uh, across the globe providing uh, relief. Experts from the UN, experts from the uh, United States uh, Agency for International Development. Uh, we've got the Filipino. Uh, Philippine government's got their own disaster relief folks uh, working. Obviously, the military's got a huge presence. Um, and this is, you, within Taco Ban, it's a, from uh, the Pacific Command, we've got, obviously, Marines got here for on, on deck first, but now uh, the George Washington uh, Carrier Strike Group is here. We've got amphibious ships coming. We've been using C-130 aircraft, transport aircraft, to open the airfield since day two. We've got C-17 aircraft now that are, that are slated to come in here. We're running 24-hour-a-day operations. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible buildup of, of power uh, capability within a very short time frame. Are you essentially happy, though, with the levels of international aid? Because when I look at some of the numbers, the um, level of aid varies greatly from country to country. China, for example, very initially offered as little as $100,000 before apparently increasing its aid uh, relief. Do you feel like maybe the U.S. is carrying too heavy a burden, that the other nations aren't um, shouldering enough of the responsibility in this otherwise international effort? I don't think that's a fair way to characterize it at all. All I've seen today are folks from countless nations flying in and out of Tacloban, they're flying out of Mactan Airfield on Cebu. Every flag you could imagine is represented. So I'm not sure where those rumors are being started or what, what opinions people hold. As far as I'm concerned, this is a full international effort to help the, the uh, government of the Philippines. You had said earlier apparently that the amphibious ships are the, quote, Swiss army knives of the U.S. military, and they're especially useful in this scenario. Is that because obviously the Philippines is an archipelago, and these are the ones who are going to be distributing the aid to a local level where it's needed maybe the most? That's exactly what their strengths are. Right now, since yesterday, we've had the George Washington providing that sort of aid. They've got dozens of helicopters, and they can, they can make water hundreds of thousands of gallons a day. Uh, package it up and they can get it out into the stricken areas. What, what the amphibious ready group would provide are, are boats that can double that effort. And so we've got displacement craft that we call them that can ferry supplies from ships uh, into, these, into these remote areas that would be difficult to sustain with helicopters. Essentially, you know, everybody's wa been watching airplanes landing at Tacloban. Seaborne lift can provide 10 times the amount of throughput that airplanes can provide. And so we're enlisting ferries uh, out of Cebu to go into, uh, into, onto the island of Leyte. The, the amphibious ready group will be able to provide uh, the displacement craft that I talked about. We've got Amtrax that will be able to go in. And so th this will be a huge enabling capability once they arrive. But right now we're utilizing the George Washington and its ships to provide that intermediate uh, support. I see. And, and just for clarification, when would the amphibious ships most likely arrive? Well, their commander is coming on, on deck here in Manila today. I'm flying down to Taco Bond with him uh, this afternoon. Uh, he'll be the advance party. We're going to have the ships uh, in the next couple of days arrive, and they'll, they'll be able to be put into uh, operation immediately. So it's coming. Pe pe people uh, certainly have a sense of urgency. Our number one priority is to save lives here in Leyte and Samar. And so as fast as I can get people here, uh, the, the better. But the ships are on, on its way. And I think if your cameras were down in Taco Bon, you'd see the uh, Navy ships off the coast right now flying in support of, of the people that need help. General, I wonder what's your, I wonder what's your top uh, security concern right now. Because to some degree, the local government's been described as paralyzed. Um, officials are either dead or they're missing or they're dealing with their own immediate needs. Are you concerned about the security there and are there things that you're doing to sort of obviously protect 
um, the relief effort. In other words, it's not just about providing relief, but to some degree ensuring that there is security during the relief effort. I have, I have to tell you that th this rumor continues to gain traction. And every time I have been down there, I'm talking with the Philippine Armed Forces. There's a division commander that, is, that has set up his uh, command post in a soccer stadium down in Tacloban. He's been there since day one. As a matter of fact, he was here before the storm hit. And he and his wife had to flee the tidal surge by crawling on top of the roof of the airport. And so they've been down here. Some of, the, some of that capability that they pre-staged got washed out to sea. But all I have seen is a steady stream of Philippine Army, Philippine Navy, and the National Police coming into Tacloban. We're pushing them down to Ormoc. They're getting pushed out to Samar. And so all these reports about uh, lawlessness and the security situation deteriorating are, I think, people that have an agenda. What, I've, what I have personally observed is that the Philippine Army has moved out in force and they are taking charge of these neighborhoods. So I'm not sure what else I can do to instill confidence that the security situation is in hand in the remote areas that I can't see and that the Philippine Army can't get access to, we can't describe. But from where we have the ability to push security forces in, I think that it, it, it would give you a pretty good sense that, that things are well in hand. Thank you, General. I'm wondering, um, now that you've been there, and with the effort probably just sort of increasing with the next few days as they go, do you see a situation where there might be parallels to Haiti? And I ask because so much aid went to Haiti in 2010, and some of it just didn't get to the most needy. Uh, is that, is, I'm not suggesting it's happening now, but I, I do want to ask if you or others among your crew think that there's a potential for that, parallels to Haiti, where their aid comes in, but its distribution just isn't as effective as it ought to be, in part, if no other reason, that the local government is um, not quite as uh, robust, after all, as it was before the storm hit. On day one, it was very difficult to get aid out. Uh, the roads were, were closed. Uh, we were just building up our effort at the airport. The airport was not even at 100% capability. Every single day it has in increased in its capability. So now we're running 24-hour operation, 24 operations as I described before. I think given the geography of the islands of Leyte and Samar, which are really where the storm hit, it hit first and hit the worst, the beauty is that the population is, is largely accessible from the sea. And so you asked a question about amphibious forces and about naval forces and, and the, 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 the strengths that they bring. I think we're gonna be able to leverage the maneuverability of the sea in order to get to those most remote locations. So I can't speak to Haiti because I was not there. But I know that we have populations that we can get to because we can, we can fly from Tacloban and the, and the other air ports that we've established with helicopters We'll be able to access them, uh, access them with, with boats. Yesterday alone, they identified 24 villages that needed support. The Philippine Armed Forces, with their own helicopters, pushed 16 uh, missions out to those sites where they're distributing uh, food, water, and shelter. So I, I think that we have a pretty good plan to get at to the most outlying regions. Uh, it, it takes a couple of days to get this sorted through, in many cases, we didn't understand what the need was because there was no way to communicate with those those villages. But I think today we have a better handle on it. Tomorrow we'll know even more. And General, finally, what's still missing from this effort? If you could really on a, have, have your wish list, anything that you want to essentially aid your effort, make it either better or stronger or faster, what would you like to still see happen or, or come to you? I have to be honest with you, and I'm not trying to... Uh, be an, opti uh, an eternal optimist here, but from what I have seen, you've seen a full court press by the international relief community, you've seen a full court press by the, the, by the military, uh, all the allies are represented, you've got a pretty good division of labor uh, throughout Central Command, the Philippine Central Command, I've seen Canadian uh, airplanes flying out of uh, Cebu, we've got the Navy operating uh, within Leyte and Samar. We've got the International Red Cross, as I've described. You've seen USAID and the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Really, 
they're, they're corralling the World Food Program, they're corralling uh, NGOs and international donors. I mean, I think you would be very pleased if you saw just how much support is being flowed into a very small area and it's being sorted and stacked by subject matter experts that don't wear uniforms. And so, I'm not saying that I couldn't use more of, a, of any one thing. There's, you could always use more and you could always increase uh, the pace of operations, but right now all I see is this thing is, is proceeding on a timeline that I'm comfortable with. The JTF commander, uh, the Joint Task Force Command that has been stood up yesterday from the U.S. Pacific Command is flowing in tonight. Uh, that will increase our ability to, to, to coordinate with our international partners how we can make sure that we have the most comprehensive approach to distributing aid to the most needy people. General, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you again, and good luck to you and your crew and what you're doing down there. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to work with you. Have a great day.